together, all of us, not just us, but you guys are part of the worship team every Sunday, all right? I count on you guys to show up, so don't disappoint me, all right?
Um, in that worship guide, of course, you'll be able to follow along with Pastor as he talks about how we're all uncomfortable. Uh -huh. I don't know about you guys, but last week it made me uncomfortable. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, good message, though. Uh, but, yeah, you can follow along with Pastor, of course, in that. Also in there, you're going to have your connection card. Um, connection card, fill that out, especially if you haven't been here. Even if you have, if information's changed, get your name on there. Let us know what's going on. Uh, also, there's a there's a spot on there for your decision. If you make a decision today, uh, you'll see that on there. Make sure you put fill that out. Uh, we'll collect that later on with the offering at the end of service. Uh, and also at the bottom, most importantly, we have prayer requests and praise reports. So if you have anything that you would like uh, for for Pastor and our prayer warriors to join with you on. Um, in prayer, anything going on in your life, or just praising God because something awesome has happened as God always comes through and shows us that he's awesome. Put that on there as well and fill those out. Again, we're going to collect those at the end of service. All right. So um, again, if you didn't get one of those, make sure you raise your hand. We have an usher in the back that'll get one to you. Um, also, turn around and say hello and greet your neighbors and everyone say hello. <laughs> things for you before uh, we get Pastor up here and, and hear from the Word this morning. First of all, uh, what's next Sunday? Okay, well that's important too, so yeah, yeah. Remember, remember that. Um, what else do we need to remember for next Sunday? Oh, they did. They did good. Yeah. Uh, Amelia, come on. No. Uh, no. So remember your bottles. I'm sure you've all been filling those up. Uh, I've been slowly filling mine. Uh, but I know, like, I have a stash of change, so it'll all get yeah. filled up really quick, and we'll get it in next week. So make sure if you guys have those, uh, if you've been filling those up, even if you didn't get a bottle, uh, bring in money anyway, because Hope 360 right. can use it. So um, we'll be collecting all those next week, so make sure you do bring that stuff, uh, and, and we'll get that all over to them. And, and they always, um, yeah, they, they just love it, um, just raising the money to help them out. Uh, also, step two of the growth track is happening today, so if you have not done the growth track and want to jump in, step two is there. Uh, discover your design, uh, so, so that will be at um, 12 p.m., right over here. If you haven't been there, find one of us and we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, if you've been through all of them and missed this one, jump in there and take it. If you haven't done any of them, you're more than welcome to jump in now. You can always catch number one next month. Right. So, uh, so make sure you do that. Pastor will be ready to teach that. Also, uh, just a um, thrown out there, small groups have started. Uh, I know we had one start yesterday, and, and I saw some pictures of sewing stuff and stuff that was <laughs> seemed super exciting to me, but they, they, said, they said I couldn't be a part of that group, so I, was, uh, I don't know. Anyway, no, um, but no, so we had one start last week, and then uh, they'll be starting this week and, and beyond, so, so if you did sign up for one of those, make sure you figure out or remember what time you're supposed to be there, and uh, those are getting started, so, so have fun with those. Uh, that is actually all I have for you today, so um, do you want to roll the video? Just uh, working with that, just listening to it makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> 
And so uh, I thought it was fascinating that, uh, that we're all kind of walking through this series together, uh, learning what it means to get a little uncomfortable. And, you know, our Christian walk sometimes is a little uncomfortable. And uh, it doesn't call us to pull back or, or pull back in any way, but to keep moving forward. And so I'm excited to continue this for this week and maybe one more week, I think, before we switch topics. But uh, but it's been good for me. Also, I hope it's been good for you. Also, a reminder, too, as Terrence had pointed out, the notes are in the um, program, but also a lot of you have the Bible app. And look at that. It's the same graphic on there. So you know you found us. If you use the Bible app, you can find us under events. And it pops up live there, and you can follow along with the notes there. You can punch in your own notes. And, and so I appreciate Terrence taking care of that for us each week. And so, uh, yes, thank you, Terrence. So uh, today we're going to go back to our theme scripture that kind of started this whole section off. And uh, is anybody yet feeling uncomfortable, or is it just... No, okay, all right. So, all right, we're starting to feel... Okay, I, I, we, wanted, we talked about this last week. we got to embrace being uncomfortable, because uh, I tell you, if we don't grow and stretch, all right, the enemy wants to keep us not just feeling uncomfortable, but like having uncomfortableness pull us back. Yeah. You know? And we as believers know, no, that's not going to happen to us. Amen? So it says here in the Word, let's turn up there and look at Romans here. It said where we got our theme for this. Starting in, in chapter 5, just the second part of verse 3, I started reading that there, and, and then some words pop, popped out to me. You'll see them in yellow there. It says when we run into problems and trials, and we already clarified this, I think, the last couple of weeks. We all have problems with trials, right? So I'm talking to a crowd of people where we experience this, okay? Problems and trials. We know that they do something for us, all right? Now, maybe not while you're going through it, but we know, according to the Word of God, they help us to endure. They give us endurance. Amen? They help us develop it. So the next section there on, on about verse 4, it says, and endure something. So we got problems and trials, okay? The Bible says that it helps us to increase our endurance. And then endurance develops something, something that we all want to have as believers, as human beings here on earth, as, as friends to our family and co-workers and neighborhood. We want to have us some character. I don't mean character like a joke. I mean strength and character, who we are. So, it does, so endurance builds character, and then character does something. As your character develops, it says this. It says character strengthens our confident hope. All right? And hope, what, we want to display that. We want to walk in it. We want to share it. The hope of salvation. And finally, in verse 5, it says this. And this hope, this hope's going to do something. This confident hope I have is going to lead us to somewhere. It will not lead us to disappointment. It will not lead us to disappointment, but rather we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. So I see that as we go through, as we build this, we have this open opportunity as the Holy Spirit moves through us to move in love towards other people. And that's, that's to me, is the greatest joy of enduring things, knowing, okay, Lord, there's a reason I'm going through this. There's a reason I'm having difficulty in this area. Whatever it is, Lord, let your love flow through me, not my attitude but rather strengthen my attitude, my character, so that your love is what people see, all right? So that's kind of where the, how this whole thing started. And we talked about the last couple of weeks that it's important for us. First of all, we knew, we started about uh, two weeks ago, we got to know God, our first mm -hmm. panel. We got to know God. We spent a whole time talking about sometimes walking through difficulties is all part of knowing God. And then last week, too, we talked about the next two points of, of being uncomfortable, all right? It happens. And then finally, Really embracing the cross and what it stands for. But today, we're going to talk specifically about something. Specific that is very near and dear to my heart, and I think probably near and dear to yours. And it's on this next slide, which we're really talking about. It's the heading on your notes there. Uh, uncomfortable people. But we're going to get specific here. I'm not going to name any of you, all right? I might talk about me a little bit, but I'm not going to put anybody on the spot today. That's a promise you have from me. But we all know, when you walk into a group, Walk into church. Maybe some of you, this is your very first time here. Some, it, it can be walking into a crowd. Maybe you've been gone for a while. Maybe it's someplace you go every week. And there are times you just feel uncomfortable. And it's not because the temperature's not right. It's not because but people sometimes make you feel uncomfortable. And I tell you, that's the way the enemy wants to work. He wants you to, he wants to put division between you and people so that you will not push forward and go forward. A lot of times you'll find, this is just life, um, we get involved in things that we're comfortable with. And so we join um, uh, maybe a, a group or a uh, work in a certain place. 
and we kind of are like-minded, and so you kind of like, you know, even at a workplace, you know, well, I, didn't, I don't want to work there, I have to, whatever, you can always leave, all right? There's all kinds of options in life. If you go to something, maybe it's, you're going to college, and there's a class you don't like, I did this several times in college, you drop it, okay? You're uncomfortable, it's just like, this is, I, I dropped economics three times until I passed it, no, accounting, accounting until I passed it. And so, you know, there's times when you, when in normal life, you can do that. Unfortunately, though, and I'm not speaking to you guys because you're all here, we do this in the church. As we come in the church and we treat the church like the world, well, I don't have to go here. And this person makes me feel uncomfortable, and that makes me feel uncomfortable, so I just leave. And there are, we discuss this, there's good reasons to leave a church. Sometimes God is moving you on to a different experience. There's a place you're supposed to be, and that's okay. But sadly, so many Christians, I, in my experience of 30 years of ministry, most people that leave a church, most people, I'm serious, most people that I talk to leave a church, they don't go anymore. Some of them will tell you, I'm going to this church, and you should go for a little while, and they drop out there. And again, it's just, it's just how the devil works, because he wants us isolated. He wants us, he wants us to be a part of something and see it's great and then think, oh, I could never be good enough. I'll just never, you know, they, they do this, they do that. And, and so he, he puts problems up with people and causes us, well, I didn't like the pastor's sermon. I didn't like the worship song. I didn't like the way they, the snacks they gave my kids. I don't know. There's just, there's all kinds of things that if we let it, all right, it can get in the way. But the truth of the matter is, and this is what you have to know, people, you have to know this. You're here for a reason. And the reason is not because you may have had friends invite you or you know me personally, you know someone here, and that's important, but the reason you're here is because of this verse. It's found in Psalm 127. Psalm 127. It says, unless the Lord builds a house, okay, this is a house. This is a house of God. This is a body of believers. This is, this is a group we put together. The work of the builders is wasted. See, we can do all kinds of campaigns and try and get people in the door, and, and churches do that. And I've done campaigns myself, and there's reasons to do it. But the most important thing is that you know God has put you there. And when you realize God is, it's okay to be a little stubborn then. You know, it's like, I'm not moving. God put me here, you know. So what if this person always scares me down, or we seem to, you know, do this or miss that, or, you know, because sometimes people have off days. You know, sometimes there's people either around or they didn't smile at me pastor looked at me all the time during the sermon. And I really wasn't talking about you. And so, but you got, you got to hold your ground and realize the Lord plants me. Yeah, he, he does use different people and conditions and all that kind of stuff, but that's, I think that's central for us to realize is we're dealing with uncomfortable people in the church. You know, the Lord planted me here, so this is what I'm going to do. So uh, have your way, Lord. Have your way. I want you, Lord, to build this house. I want you to have, I just want to be a part of the structure. Amen. So the early church was growing very, very quickly. If you look at me here in the verse of Acts, familiar verse of, version of the Bible, verse of the Bible, it says in Acts 46, this is the early church, shortly after Jesus had resurrected, the early church was forming, and it says they worshiped together at the temple, capital T, it was at a building of some sort, the church, I don't know if they were referring to Jewish temples or where they met, but they would meet together corporately. Each day, they met in the Lord's home, though, the people's homes for the Lord's Supper. They would, they would gather together for that. They'd have the Lord's Supper. They'd share meals with each other. And look at that. Those words just pop out at me. With joy and generosity. With joy and generosity. Now, that's the first half. They were doing that. Now, let's look at the next verse. Not only did they have joy and generosity, but it shows you, it shows you there in verse 47. All the while, here's the joy and the generosity going on. Something was happening to the people. You guys should have been here at 9 o'clock this morning. Some of you were. At 9.25, we all gather. We always do that. We get here at 9, get things ready. 9.25, we gather together just to pray over the day and share what's going on in different departments. I didn't hush everybody down. There was so much joy and generosity going on. It was so exciting. Usually, we're all kind of drinking our coffee down and trying to get stirred. It was like the Lord was doing something amongst us this morning, and you all get to be a part of it. Amen. And so, so that they were enjoying... The goodwill of all the people. I enjoy being in the house of God. I enjoy being with people serving the Lord. It's exciting. And here's what happens. When that, when that happens, here's what goes on. And each day, the Lord, the Lord, added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Each day. Well, but I don't want to invite that person. Yes, but it's the Lord that moves them. 
It's the Lord that puts it on your heart. It's the Lord that works these things together. We keep that attitude and that perspective right. It just changes the way we do church, the way we are as a body of believers. I wonder in that early church, I just wonder, I wonder if they had disagreements at times. I wonder, I wonder if sometimes somebody didn't look at them right or, or give the right snack to their kid or something. But again, I think it's that joy and generosity that was overflowing. I want to be a part of that joy and generosity. That's what we want, right? That's what you want in the body of people. Amen? Amen. Let's let the Lord build our house. All right. Now I'm going to switch to 1 Corinthians 12. And uh, it's, a, it's a version that I like. It's called the Passion Translation. I just, I enjoy reading this and, and uh, it just is a little bit different. It's, it says it's a translation, but it's a little bit more modern English here. And it says this, is just as the human body is one, though it has many parts that together form one body, so too is Christ. For by one spirit, we were immersed and mingled. Now, if you want to remember one word for today, because we're going to talk about this word several times, it's the word mingle. I just, that word to me is just fascinating. It's just like, when I read it in this version, I, just, I saw this picture of the church and how we're to mingle, because that's what God says we're to do. And it, it was just, it was like, whoa, it just popped up off the page to me. Into, it says, one single body. Next verse. And no matter our steps... All right? No matter our stats, so this is looking like they look through the eyes of the early church, whether, we're, whether we are Jews or non-Jews, oppressed or free, in other words, you know, I got lots of stuff holding me down, or I'm real set free, all that kind of stuff doesn't matter. We are all privileged to do something, to drink deeply of the same Holy Spirit. In fact, and here it is again, the human body is not one single part, but rather many parts mingled in one. There's that word mingle again. It keeps popping up. You know, I, I like that, I like that, that, uh, that uh, picture of that. Mingled into one. The definition of mingle is right up front here behind me. It says to mingle is to mix or blend. And it actually means, I went to my Webster's 1828. If you ever wonder what dictionary to use, always go to the Webster's 1828 dictionary. It's the best, all right? It goes back a lot of times. It'll equate scripture. It'll bring it back into, into wholeness here. And so it means to unite as one body. That's what it means is to mingle. Now, I know there's been several occasions you guys have probably gone to. The one that comes to mind is, is, is weddings. Um, we do it here at church too, but, but there's a wedding, two, two Saturdays from now, I have two weddings to go to. Well, one's a wedding, the second one is a, uh, is a uh, reception. And usually what happens at a wedding is during the reception, the bride and groom have to do something, don't they? They gotta mingle, all right? They get out, they, get, they may have their food up the front or whatever if it's a dinner, and then it's their responsibility to get out and mingle with the crowd. And they'll, you'll see them, they'll be at this point, they'll get up from their seat, and the bride's still in her gown, and, and they're, they're walking around, and they're, they're saying, now, usually, because it's, a, it's an opportunity for a bride and groom's families and friends to know each other, you'll introduce, you know, I know, the, I know the groom, I know the bride, or whatever, tell some short story, and you move on to the next. You know, that's what mingling is. That picture is what I picture to how the church should be. Wouldn't it be something if everybody who came into a body of believers felt that they had really been mingled in a good way? It's like, not over, you know, oh, everyone's just crazy over you, but it's like, oh, you got to know a little bit about people. You got to like, you got to exchange a little information. You show people really did care. How do you know? What do you know? Um, how, how did you come to find us? Or, or who are you related to? And, and it's just... Mingling is such an important part, and that's really what, what God has, I believe, called us to do. He sees the church that way, a place where his people, that's you and me, are mingled. All right? So let's take a look. Let's look, so take an even closer look, if you bear with me here. A closer look, what I believe the blueprint for God's picture is with people in it. All right? I'm not talking about the tip, the building. We have lots of different buildings. We all know that. We've all, I think, been set free of, like, the church is not the building. The church is the people. Right? So we take the people for who God, God put them here, even that person you don't get along with, okay? We believe the Lord builds the house. That's his plan. There's probably a reason there's a little bit of friction. Remember we talked about iron sharpens iron? Sometimes it's good for there to be a little friction, a little bit of heat, because something sparks fly sometimes, all right? 
That's a good thing. Some good positive things can come out of that. So let's take a look, closer look at this blueprint. The first fill in there, number one, is just so simple. It says right up there, everyone is welcome. <laughs> That's just, we just got to accept the fact of that when God builds the house, the house of God, his church, everyone is welcome. You know, I, I'm very honored in the fact that, that, uh, that our body of believers, there's quite a wide range of ages here, right? We have, we have we got, a whole, we got a bunch of kids all back there in children's ministry. We got some, some in preschool. We got some elementary age. We got some 20-year-olds. We got some 30-year-olds. I got some 40-year-olds. I don't want to look at people and think, oh, what are you say? Well, I know we got some 50s and 60s out there, and maybe we got more. And to me, that's exciting. It's like, that's mingling. I mean, because like I say, it, it just, it's just, it's just, that's what God wants. You know, the older learn from the younger, the younger learn from the older, you share life with each other. And uh, it's very exciting. I really think that's part of God's plan because he wants one, 1 Timothy 2, 4 says this. He wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Well, that makes sense then. If he wants everyone to be saved, then he wants everyone welcome in the house of God. There's not one person that walks through those doors that isn't welcome. Even if they feel unwelcome, according to God, his blueprint is everyone is welcome. Well, they don't believe like I do. They're still welcome. Well, they don't look like I do. Well, they're still welcome. Well, they're too young. They're still welcome. They're too old. They're still, they're still welcome. That's the way God sees it. That's the, that's the sort of culture we in the body of Christ, God wants us to have with people. Not just Connection Church. This is a culture God has for the church itself. Amen? All right? In the body of Christ, every person is important. And so then I brought that scripture up there again. Verse 13, you're going to hear mingled over and over again. You're just going to get sick of it. Because that he says, by one spirit we were all immersed and mingled into one single body. All right? How much you want to bet by the time you leave today, you're going to feel mingled. All right? It's, it's, it's going to happen. When, when something is immersed or mingled, there's a difference between immersion and mingling. I'm going to explain that in just a second. Because, again, this is the way the Lord explains it to me. When I read the scripture, I get all kinds of pictures and stories. And, and this is the way he explained it to me, so I hope it makes sense to you. But uh, when something is, is mingled, uh, let's just say, for example, I have a couple of props here. Let's just say you're going to make, pretend this is lemonade. You're, and I was going to make strawberries, but there were, there were raspberries right outside there. Let's just make, let's just say you're going to make raspberry lemonade. Would you agree that for many of us, that's a pretty good thing to have? Now, I can do a couple things. I can just immerse the raspberries into the lemonade like that, and it would just be lemonade with raspberries, you know? It would not be the same. It doesn't change until you mingle it. And the way you mingle it is you got to take a little pressure, you got to push, you got to stretch, you got to work with it over and over and over again. And before long, now you can see it's kind of a kind of a reddish color. All right, this brings back to kids' church. We see yeah. these kind of things all the time. It's like, oh, this is fun, Lord. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, it tastes different to you. It looks different to you. It looks more inviting to me because all of a sudden there's this red drink that I'm all of a sudden attracted to because I, in my mind I'm thinking. I've had it at, at Red Robin, I've had it at home. I want, you know, so you're just like, all these memories come to you when, it, when you see something truly mingled. And I think, oh Lord, that's so good. That's what we want the church. We want when people walk in the door to immediately feel immersed, first of all, like the berries dropped in there, and then mingle, be a part. You see, the pastor can't do that. The teacher alone can't do that. Even the 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 the, uh, the attendant out of the, uh, the greeter. greeter can't do that. Or the part of them. They can't they can't do the mingling. They're a part of it. But it's everything working together to create this beautiful thing. Here we call raspberry lemonade. Uh, what the Lord calls the church. He calls the church. One of the biggest disappointments I hear from people when they do decide to leave the church is that, you know, that church grew and I just didn't feel a part anymore. That's why you have small groups. That's why you have people that gather. That's why you develop relationships. That's why those ladies were down there sewing yesterday. You know, they were there together, mingling, changing thread, and, and needling each other. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> thread the needle. That's what it is. That's what it's all about. 
That's a picture of the church. And again, I'm sorry if I went on and on about that. I just want to make sure you leave today understanding what mingled is. The way I see it. All right? So the, the check mark under there is, is, is just, just to reemphasize that God puts you where he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. God puts you. You know, oh, I think the Lord's moving on. Well, you better make sure he is, because he puts you one place for a reason. Yeah. He'll be moving on until you hear clearly. It's kind of like I heard the, uh, the story one day the other day of, of someone else. I can't remember someone here, so I want to talk specifically about it. So anyway, but with, like somebody, they, they move on. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they, they move on, so they gave notice of their apartment before they had a place to go. Yeah. That's, not, that's, that's not real good wisdom. It does happen sometimes. You have to, but it's like... It's like, come on now. It's just, don't be moving out until the Lord moves you. When he does, you'll know everyone will be free. Everyone will have peace. Amen? Amen. All right. We want to honor. You and I have a role of honoring each other and the positions and roles of where God's put them. It's important, that, it's, it's important for me to encourage, but people expect that from the pastor. You know what will encourage people more? Is if you encourage people. Yeah. You know? And if you tell Oscar, and I was glad to see you up there. If you tell Amelia, thank you for filling in because Devin had to go get a dog this weekend. You know, I mean, it's those sorts of things. If you encourage Terrence, Terrence, thank you for leading this transition, helping us pray over us. It's those, it's those little things. If you speak to a teacher who's watching your kids, thank you for laying your life down for my kids. It just, again, that's part of mingling. Just, oh, I get my things here, time for me to go. Yeah. Oh, don't. And I know maybe out of your comfort zone, you know, you're not a big talker, you're more of an extrovert or introvert than extrovert. And I've all confessed to all of you, I'm an introvert. I'm a major introvert. I love, I get re energized when I'm at home by myself. <laughs> I do, all right? And uh, that's what introverts really are. It doesn't mean I don't love being with people, it's just that it takes a lot out of me. I get tired very quickly. Sunday afternoon, I'm on the couch. Okay, I'm taking a nap. All right, it just, I just, it just takes a lot out of me. I want to, but for some people, they get in a crowd, they're just like, woo! They're just like excited. They, they feel strengthened and energized, and and just get filled up, you know. And I wish I was like that, but it takes all of us together, amen. Yes. All right, God puts you where He wants to. For the next verse, First Corinthians twelve eighteen says this. But our bodies, and he's using the body to explain how God does all this. The bodies fit many parts, and God has put each part, look at this, just where he wants it. Oh, but pastor, I don't know where he wants me. Good news, that's why we have class two, step two today. We, we, take a, we take a personality inventory, a spiritual inventory to help you discover those giftings and talents God's put you into you, and why this would be a good area for you to serve. Because God made you for a specific way to serve. Pastor, I just don't know what it is. Just try something. Just start out. The first time I started in children's ministry, I said, no way is that me. No way. But I was obedient because somebody tapped me on the shoulder. I said, would you do this? Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I did it, and that was 30 years ago, and I did not stop. Because I found, I, I, I stepped out in faith, and I believe God for it, and look what happens. He puts us in a place right where he wants us. It doesn't matter if your role is up here on the platform, or on the worship team, or in children's ministry, or making the coffee, or leading people up there. Whatever it is, so vital and so important. All right, 1 Corinthians 12, a few more verses here to follow along. 22 says this, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and the least important are actually the most necessary, all right? The most necessary. But I'm, you know, I, I always use kids just because kids is an out of sight, out of mind. A lot of people go, they don't even realize we have children here because they're in ministry the whole time. <laughs> We're not trying to get rid of them. We know it's best to give age-appropriate ministry. I think it's good for them. It's good for us, so you can focus. It's good for the parents. It's good for the kids. But, uh, but uh, so you don't hear much about, you don't hear a lot about it. You don't hear a lot of activity or action or anything <laughs> until afterwards, you know, one of my granddaughters or grandson will come and grab you around the leg or something. But you won't, otherwise you won't, you won't hear a whole lot. But they're, they're due their honor. They're, 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 every part is so important. You know, these, these parking lot people, I think of Ron and Dan, they sit out there by themselves, you know, 
uh, or up front, Tim was out front greeting, you know, there's nobody out there. Fortunately, Glenn's there for you to talk with, but it's like, you're out just in case yeah. one person walks through that door, especially one that's never been here before, to help them feel comfortable. To help them, oh, I could belong here. You guys care about me. That's what it's all about, amen? Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And the parts we regard as less honorable and those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. So you'll notice, I carefully protect our children's work. I carefully, I, I care for them deeply. I, I, in fact, I care for them so much, I force some of them out of that because they're in there every week. And it's just, I know after years of ministry, that's not the best way to do it, all right? It's important that people rotate. It's important that, that people get to be with other people too. So, and you can't possibly give out. You have to receive too. So we carefully protect those parts. All right. Next verse, verse 24. Well, more honorable parts do not require the special care. And you can just, let's just be honest here. A front position, the pulpit, if you're on the worship team, if you're speaking, if you're, if you're, when Terrence is doing the transition, I kind of talk about Terrence encouraging, but we all get the encouragement just by your faces. We get it all the time. We receive it from you. I mean, we know that. We know if you're responding or not. All right. It's everyone else who's doing that. That's why they need more care and more, more extra honor. That extra honor and care be given to those parts that have, and the way, the way the word puts it is less dignity, because it's not it's not the showpiece, it's not the stage, it's not the, it's, it's the hard and pretty work. Next verse. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other, and I think a couple more verses. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer. Wait a second. And if no part is honored, if and if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. And one more verse. All of you together are Christ's body. Each of you has a part in it. Each of you. I'm just trying, I'm trying to build this up. I'm trying to get us to recognize that, that you as a person, you have a part to play. You have a role, large or small. Everything is very, very important. I want you to say this with me. Look at the next slide. Say it with me. Here we go. I have a part in the church. You weren't laughing. Say it again. I have a part in the church. Now, some of you think it's just to warm that seat, and that's okay for a season. But you can't stay there. All right? You can't stay there. But you have a part to play in the church, and you're honored and you're needed. All right? So everyone is welcome, first of all. God puts us where he wants us. But number two, here's the next slide. This is reality, okay? Being a part of the church, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Now, there are, there's never a Sunday I don't want to be in church, but to be totally honest, all pastors say this at least, what, I don't know, probably twice a week I'm ready to quit. I mean, just, you know, it's just, it's hard. The number there are, what did I tell you last I heard the last statistic? There are 400 new churches in America every year and there are 700 churches that resign. So we're, we're, we're going backwards. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's exciting when you first start, but it's hard. Yeah. It, it, you know, working with, and it's not because the finances or the building or anything like that, working with people is hard because they rip your guts out. You know, and because you love people, because that's what shepherding is, any area that you love people, you care for them, and then when people go, it tears you inside. But we have to put on this front, it's okay, you let the Lord lead you. you, you know, you do what you need to do. But there's not a pastor out there, large or small, that isn't ripped apart every time a member leaves. So just remember, you want to make sure, there's reason to leave, you want to make sure it's of God. Yeah. Because, again, you're, you're a part, it's like, it's like, it's like if I rip the, my hand off, I don't need it anymore. No, I do. My hand might not think I need, I need my hand, all right? I gotta eat my ice cream, I gotta have it, all right? <laughs> Remember in, in 12.13 I said this, uh, well, Paul says it, 1 Corinthians 12.13, this next verse here. For by one spirit we're all immersed and mingled, there's my favorite words, especially mingled, into one single body. And then it says, and no matter our status, and again, this is more, even though this is a modern translation, this is more referring to biblical times because back then in that area, you were either Jew or non-Jew. It wasn't like you're Catholic, Episcopal, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was like you were either Jewish or non-Jewish. Christianity wasn't born yet. 
So you're either, you were, no matter if it's a Jew or non-Jew, oppressed or free, all right? Because they had, slavery was rampant in those days. Slavery, all kinds of things going on, oppressed or free. And we are all privileged to drink deeply of the same Holy Spirit. Now, now that's really good, um, and that's a more modern version, but I want to tell you how I read it. And so this next verse that you're going to put up there, I call it the, the J, what do I call it? J, P, J, P, Pastor Jerry paraphrase. <laughs> okay? Now the Bible says, warns us, we're not to change the Bible or anything. I'm just, I'm, I have a little fun with you that just let me know what goes through mind when I read it. I'm not changing the word of God. This is just fun, all right? But this is how, I, the, the red, yellow part of what I would, the way I read it is like this. For by one spirit we were all immersed and mingled into one single body. Here we go. Regardless of background, nationality, social status, political belief, or any other arbitrary dividing lines that don't matter in the kingdom of God. I just, that, again, everyone needs to have their own opinion and political persuasion, all that kind of stuff. That makes life exciting. But when we're in the church, when we're together, when we're believers, it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree with me. I love you just as deeply. Besides that, your opinion, my opinion, really doesn't matter. It's only God's opinion that really matters. You know? And all of our opinions change over time as we get more exposure to the Word of God and life experience, all that kind of stuff. And so again, I'm just trying, it's like, that's I believe what Paul was, Paul was speaking to the church. He said, when you people gather, it doesn't matter if you have different political views or, or different, you like to run this way or run that way or drive this car, you like a Ford, you like a Toyota. It, people fight over the craziest thing, yeah. all right? I want to get into sports teams because I don't understand. But I hear people fight about that. That's crazy to me, all right? It's just like, it's just like in all eternity, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Now, does it make life fun? Yes, have fun. It's exciting. Have vigorous debate, all that kind of stuff. But <clears throat> don't let those things divide. I hope when you come to church, you, you know, I get, I get, working for the city here, we get specific things. You cannot talk about this. You cannot say this, especially when there's political times. You cannot endorse one candidate or say this, especially if there's one in our, in our district running. And I hope that never even comes up in the church. It's the love of God that draws us together. It's yeah. eternal things that matter. Yeah, you vote for that person. You vote for that. That's all great. Let me tell you why I do this, why I do that. But you just love Jesus. You know, and it's just, it's a whole different way of thinking. If we only embrace that, you know, let's practice a little heaven on earth. Is what I'm talking. Do you really think socially divisive things really matter in the kingdom of God? Do you really think you're going to help persuade somebody into the kingdom if you make such a big, staunch feeling about how you feel about a social issue? Probably not. You'll get all you do is attract more people who think like you do, and you'll start getting weirder and weirder and weirder. That's my paraphrase again, all right? <laughs> the reality is living in community with people, especially different people from ourselves, is really hard. It's really hard. The test is, I really disagree with that person. I can look at some of you in this room right now because I know I can tell you there's certain things you do or say, I really disagree. But that's like, oh, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to do so. So it doesn't matter. I just love and hug you. I just, I just want your love to show. That's what matters to me. And I'm sure there's things that I feel strongly about. If you knew about it, I don't talk much about how I feel about things, but, but you probably say, oh, that's, that's really whack, or that's crazy, or what's the matter with you? But you still love me, because that's not my focus. My focus is the love of Jesus, and how God wants all of us to have eternal life. Amen? Amen. Disagreements, uncomfortable moments, awkward silences. Can you imagine how boring it would be if church looks like it was all identical? If everybody was the exact same age, the exact same uh, political stance, the exact same uh, income level. The, if, can you imagine if we all worked in the same place? It, it just, it'd be so boring. <laughs> it'd be so boring, amen? That's not how God, God made it. Here's a quote, another quote this week from Charles Spurgeon. This is kind of long, and, uh, and so we'll just kind of, I'll, I'll read through it. I think it's two slides, but it's just very well said. The church is faulty, okay, amen to that, but there is no excuse for you not joining it. If you are the, if you are the Lord, is what he's saying. So it's, yeah, the church, there, there's no perfect church, but, but there's no excuse for not being a part of it, he says, if you belong to the Lord. Nor need your own folks keep you back. Well, I can't go to that church because, you know, I fall in this area, I'm a mess in this area, I think differently. No. 
No need for your own faults to keep you back. For the church is not an institution for perfect people, but a sanctuary for sinners that have, something's happened to them, saved by grace. Who, through, who though they are saved, are sinners still. They need all the help they can derive from the sympathy and empathy, or excuse me, and guidance from all their fellow believers. See, I need you. We need each other. This world is not easy out there. It is harder than the church. It's just we can run places out there. When we're forced together, we need each other. We need each other's shoulders to cry on. We need each other's hearts to laugh with. When it's, you know, we, we need that, amen? And the next slide says this, it finishes up. The church is the nursery <laughs> for God's weak children, all right? We are very fallible. We just are. It doesn't take long for me to go on a pig trail. It doesn't take long for me to get distracted. Squirrel, you know, you just, it doesn't take long. Okay? God's weak children, where they are nourished and grow strong, so we can know God, find Him, and discover Him for this make a difference. For it is the fold for Christ's sheep, the home for Christ's family. You might as well just say it in your heart if you want to say it out loud. You just want to say, Welcome home. You're home. This is where God has planted you. This is where God has put you. There'll be some difficult days ahead. The person you're sitting next to right now, you're sitting by them because you get along. Next week, you might not. <laughs> All right, you two. Stop picking up. But it's like, that's, you're, you're in a nurse. This is like, you, you see the children. Sometimes we have to help the children because they don't get along. You know, they're not taking turns. <laughs> yeah, that's what the church is for. We rely on each other. It's, it's pretty pretty good, pretty exciting. And so the, the, the check mark here, I'm almost out of time, is, is a secret. There's a secret. There's a secret to the church. And I'm so glad there's a secret and that God is so good he made sure it was revealed to us. Amen. Only we as believers know this. That's why people outside the church don't understand. They don't get why are you guys going to church every Sunday morning. It's such a, some would say, a waste of time. Why are you doing that? Why are you fighting with people? You know, those people don't, they, they think this, that church is radical about this or that person's that way. Why do people have to do this all the time? Well, Paul tells us a secret. You want another secret? I want to tell you a secret because Paul tells us. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 127. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. Woo! And that's it. It doesn't get better, harder, easier than that. That is the secret of Christianity. That makes yeah. a difference from any religion. That makes a difference from any club. That makes a difference from any other movement. Is what unites us is Christ living inside of us. Not, not telling us what to do, not outside of us, not uninvolved with our life. Christ is This gives you the assurance of sharing his glory. Verse 28. So we tell others about Christ every day. Warning everyone, teaching everyone with all the wisdom that God has given us. What is the secret? We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. We want to plunder hell and be a part of populating heaven. We want to tell, we want to tell people about Christ because we want to be a part of God using us. Amen? It's really good. It's really good. All right. So we're gonna stop right there. We'll pick that up next week. Everybody, go ahead and just put your notes away. We're gonna we're gonna pray over some things and and uh, let me just just uh, do a couple things here. So go ahead and put your notes away, and then get your attention back. So thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for helping us stay on time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an abundance of information in your Word, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we, uh, as we uh, go ahead and just kind of agree with me, I'm going to kind of pray over you and, and kind of speak over a couple things. And Father, go, just going over what we spoke about so far, Lord, you reminded us today that, that uh, in the church, your church, and even specifically for the one you've drawn us to here at Connection Church, Lord, may we never forget that everyone is welcome. Father, I ask you to move on us right now. If there's anyone in this room where you you remember, there's times you realize you have not made someone feel welcome or you you thought maybe a negative thought about somebody, it happens. But just ask the Lord to help you with it. Lord, if there's people that we don't get along with here, Lord, help us out, Jesus. Help, just come in and just flood our heart. Let us persevere so that your love can flow through us. 
Father, don't let us be a people that, that are judgmental or churchy or any of those things, Lord. But let us see them with your eyes, Jesus, we ask for it. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you put us where you want us, that you put these people where they want. And I'm thrilled about it, Lord. We're thrilled that the body of believers is putting together. And Lord, also to remind you today, we talked about that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that being a part of body of believers is hard. And Father, you explain that, you know it, you understand that. But Lord, the secret is simple, it's Christ. The sim simple secret is Christ. Before we go today, with your eyes, head down, eyes closed, heads down. Let's take a moment. There's some that have not, maybe not yet asked Christ into your life. There could be some people here today that you did at one time, but you realize you, you kind of walked away from God. And today you realize, you know what? I need that secret alive in me. I need Christ to be a part of my life. If that's you, would you just be really bold and just, just lift your hand in the air for just a moment, just so I can be praying over you, just so I can see who you are and identify. Let's put our eyes up front. Let's read this declaration. Well, I'm going to read scripture and let's make a declaration together. The last scripture there is in Romans. My favorite verse, my favorite verse of the Bible, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And there it is. If you openly declare, it says that Jesus is Lord, all right, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you will be saved. And the second part is this. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Can you just repeat after me and say, Father God, Father God we, believe we believe in our heart that Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. We openly declare this. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's all stand. If you made any sort of decision for the Lord today, and you prayed, maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you prayed that prayer, on your prayer card, go ahead and mark one of those boxes so I can be praying over you. Also, if you have an offering with us, put that in the envelope. They'll be collecting those in just a moment. The prayer request cards are at the bottom there. They're perforated separate from your personal info, so be sure to put your name down there and then your prayer because we keep those things separate. And, uh, and so we're going to worship now, Lord. Amen? All right, let's do that. Let's worship together. Before they start, I forgot to announce that the prayer partners are coming up. So if you have any need of prayer today, whether it be uh, uh, for yourself or somebody else, uh, we got Lee and Cindy over here, and we got Peg and Dan over there. Just step out of your seats during our last worship song while our ushers collect the offering, and we'll take time and pray for you. Amen? Go ahead and do that.
Lord, that we can mingle today, Father. Lord, that the precious blood of Jesus Christ is mingled with us. That we can go out and be a representative to you. Father God, as we leave today, Lord, we can leave with a better understanding of what you're doing in each of us individually and corporately. Thank you, Lord, that we call this home. Thank you, Lord, that we, as, as Charles Spurgeon said, this is a nursery for us, Lord, that we can gather together just for a short time and be filled and be nourished and be strengthened and sometimes corrected, but much of the time edified by your word. Lord, that we can go forth and do your work this week and ahead of us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Have a super week. Noon in the fireside room for some of you. And... Enjoy your groups and I'm running out of things to say. God bless you guys.